Hello guys, uh, we are back on the day two of the workshop. Um, not sure if everybody is here, but, but anyway, let me start the uh, workshop uh, of today. Then, then the thing to do is I'm running on uh, YouTube live as well. But anyway, um, so today I want to first uh, start with um, the assignment review. I hope you had a good time exploring that. But anyway, uh, the way I'm gonna run the, so I want to do a quick review. So. The, so I want to ask each of you to share your screen and to present your uh, assignment work of uh, agent behavior. Then, then, then maybe I might uh, give some quick feedback or something. Uh, you can also yeah, introduce yourself, uh, maybe quick introduction, your name, uh, affiliation, and or extra. So, um, we are supposed to have. Uh, 18 participants. I mean, at the end, we had, uh, exceeded the limit of 15, but um, I see currently 15. Um, but anyway, I, I, gonna call, I have a list of students on my computer. So I'm gonna call your name and then I'm gonna ask you to share your screen then present. So that's how I wanna run the review. So first, first, um, Okay. Okay, let me let me check the my uh, document of participant. Uh, is uh Divi Yag here? Um I can check the participant on my uh, Zoom window, but actually I don't see the, the name. Okay, in that case, uh, in that case, I move on next. Uh, next, uh, by the way, uh, most of the names uh, sound fa in, uh, familiar to me in terms of the pronunciation, so I might butcher the pronunciation in the case I apologize. But uh, next, uh, uh, Raipon Nakapan, are, are you here? Can you turn on your mic and then share your screen? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good morning, I hear you. everyone. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see how to do it. Oh, before that, can you like us uh, introduce yourself and name and uh, name Okay. Uh, my name is Kualai Pan, and um, I'm a lecturer at uh, uh, Faculty of Architecture, Rangsit University near Bangkok in uh, Thailand. And um, Yes, I have done some uh, some work yesterday that I would like to show. Mm, wait, <laughs> okay, hi, oops, not here. Let, let me find how to share the screen. Sure, I, Okay, share I'm, screen. Yeah, can you do that? Um, it say host disabled participant screen sharing, so I cannot. Let me let me yeah. do that. Uh, only one participant. Let me check. Let me check my setting. Um. Okay, I can. Wait, we can still share. Okay. Um. Can you turn up? I change my setting. Yes. Um. The thing is, I'm gonna share this screen, but. I think the, the once I run the code, it will be on another screen. So uh, I don't know okay. if you will see it. I think you could check, oh yeah, you can bring the window here or something. Um, I have two screen running at the same time. So, yeah. okay, I will unplug uh, the screen. You could also oh, change the screen that? to share as well. Okay, now, so um, can you see my, 
screen. I so see uh, what I have done. Grasshopper. Okay, Th this is a grasshopper definition for gyroid that I have been working with. And I would like to import these points onto processing. So I have done that. I have right. um, all the points here. And then I oh. put them into the definition of processing. So first yeah. I defined um, my agent with vectors that I have transformed from lines in Grasshopper. But so there's so I never seen anybody doing exporting ideal code from Grasshopper. But anyway, that's good. Um, go ahead. Um, it is nothing fancy. I just copy and paste, and and do some um, modification in Atom the text editor to get the right codings for vectors. But it's very long, and I think yeah. you know, at one point I hit the limit of uh, line number. Oh. But anyway, um, that's just the um, declaration part. And then I create I the rest I just copy from that sparrow definition. So I created vectors with object oriented. It's the first time I have done object oriented. Um, I created a class and then I update these vectors, these two vectors and I would say that if the time is 100%, means that um, at first I have set the duration to 1000, which means it will loop 1000 times. And if uh, once it runs 1000 times, it will flip the direction and then go inward, which means I um, multiply it by 0 0.9. Otherwise, it will just run in spiral, pi divided by 120, and then it will move. Um, it will update the curve, etc. So I will run the code. Um, actually, this is not I wanted to do exactly because I, at first I would like to show the initial shape of the gyroid, but here it just start exploding directly. Okay. In spiral. Right. So I have tried another one. Um, sure. This one I just put. the update definition that first if it reaches two percent of the time it will it, it will expand otherwise it will flip and multiply by 0 0.9 so it will tend to go inward i haven't tried um what you have suggested yet that to update it with points but this time i use points instead of vectors so let's see So it's more contained within which, uh, within the gyroid shape. Mm -hmm. And you can see it better when it's point. OK, right. that's all. Cool. Thank you. Uh, my quick comment would be like, if you want to contain those behavior, I mean, closer to the original point, what you can do is uh, the reason why the first one went so far was not because it was fast. It was because the the increment, what like a length of line was long. Mm -hmm. And then to make it short, you don't change the time. The, you change the initial length of direction. Can you go back to like a top ah. and then you, when you, 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 you have where you have like a hundred or thousand of the first oh. definition yeah yeah I you, you see that right 
you see the second input, right? I mean, so my agent has the point one point or first vector position, but second mm -hmm. point second vector is a uh, direction. But direction mm -hmm. also defines the how far it moves. Ah. Oh. So if you so you you are like a, like a five and six or like a like a ten meter or centimeter something. So right. if you make it like a one hundredth of them, like if you divide this by hundred something, or like make mm -hmm. everything like point zero zero six or point zero zero five something, then that each step will be shorter. And that will stay closer oh, to original. Okay. So that's how we could do it. All right. About, but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. If I change the multiplication like to zero point one. Uh, still the first step gonna be huge. Oh. And the second step is tiny, and then third step is will be almost zero. Okay. So, would so I can multiply multiply these first vectors initial vectors. Yeah, that would be the by, uh -huh. yes, that would be best okay. to. Okay. Thank you so much. So. All right, good. All right, thank you very much. That was uh, impressive. Um, so now I want to move on to the next person. Uh, on my name is Zijiao uh, oh, Wei. Oh, is, okay, for, uh, there should be a button to stop uh, sharing, maybe on the top of the window. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear one moment, your voice. One moment. Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, I want uh, each of the participants spend like uh, three or five minutes because we have like more than 10 people to go through. So, but anyway, oh, you might not quit to do it, but anyway. Um, okay, I'm gonna okay. share go ahead. my screen. Yeah. Uh, share my screen. So, uh, okay, so hello everyone, my name is Olivia and uh, for the, uh, I'm from Beijing and uh, I graduate from Savannah College of Art and Design and my major is architecture. So for the assignment, I did four experiments. Um, so my pattern is quite simple. <laughs> compared to um, the, the former one. So this is the first one. Should I run it in? Sure, yeah. Okay. To be inside. Okay, oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, so what I did is I, I was experimenting with the number, the IG time and the, the, this number and this pi divided by this number. So I was changing the number and to see, so I wasn't quite sure what these things are going to do with. So I would just experiment and see the result. And for this one, it goes like a spiral, it's like a spider wipe. So I was thinking it's quite interesting. I run in the code, I don't see the- Oh, you can't see it? Here. Yeah, I might be seeing, we are just seeing the folder. Of, oh. It might be running on another display. No, it's the same screen, but okay. it's running here. Well, at least okay. I see only the folder. Okay, so maybe I'll just show this picture. Sure. So after after I run it, it just shows a spider wipe kind of like that. <laughs> so this is my first one. And for my oh, second the, one. Oh. By the way, first one, I didn't see the image other than the icon. Oh, you didn't see be, it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, image was, might be shown somewhere else. And then, yeah, it, it went somewhere else. And then the Zoom. Oh, you might be, you might oh, be sharing only the folder yeah, no. window. You didn't show the whole window or you didn't share. Oh, I see. Um, you, can, you can reshare 
the window. Okay, let me try again. Uh, um, I share. Oh, so it's different. How can I show the yeah. whole screen? Oh, there's an option like when you try to share screen, like uh, uh, each application and there's a uh, screen. Oh, oh, oh screen. I see. Yeah, so right now was, uh, recommending the on the chat. Yeah, yeah, that's not, oh, not okay. Yeah. Well, finally, <laughs> okay. Yep. So um, this is my sketch and this is how it yep. runs. Okay. So this is the first pattern. And the second one looks looks like this. Mm -hmm. And what did you also for the second one? Um it's uh, another method. Uh okay. so I change with the IG time and the mm -hmm. equal equal. I change okay. uh, all the numbers and this pi divided something. So all I right. change all Good. and I get this pattern and I screenshot it. Um the third one. Looks like a flower. Not look nice. Um, um, again, I changed. Uh, so right uh, for the IG time, I didn't change. I just changed the pi divided to 300, uh, 360. And it mm -hmm. turns out very differently. Yep. And for the last one, uh, so also I change I just changed the pi divided by four fifty uh fifty four uh, five four fifty uh, five okay. forty sorry <clears throat> and um, it turns out like this so yeah, I okay. just yeah I thought the third one is that I got agent going outside from center but it was spiral it was it's nice I mean okay j just a feedback uh, so you you already showed all the work you did yes okay. Uh, my comment. Okay, third one looks interesting because the third one looked like uh, some lines are touching each other. Yeah. Then, but that was a kind of coincidence, right? Just uh, it just happened to have that condition. So, uh, uh, not this one, not this one. Uh, this one. Need a third uh, one. This one. Is this yeah, one? So, yeah, that one, that one, like us, uh, it's spiral, but it looks like a uh, line is connected. So, then, oh, yeah. but it's, it's, it just, I mean, you, if you really think about the number, you could make that happen, you could control it, but it's super difficult to do. But, but it's kind of a lucky moment, and uh, yeah, that just uh, interesting to me. I mean, of course, <laughs> other one is good, but, but anyway, uh, yeah, okay, thank you for your work. Uh, do you have any question other than that? Um, no, I was I wasn't very sure about like which number, like what all the number do. So I was just experimenting. Right. <laughs> yeah, that that's the right way to do. I'm not I I don't know what the number means either. So yeah, you just try. And <laughs> think, so okay, thank right? you. Great, thank you. Okay, the next person, uh, Shamira, look, and I'm not sure the family name. Are okay, Zach. Uh, are you there, Shamira? I see in the participant and the I see your microphone is muted. If you can. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. I, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, I hear you now. I, can you share your screen? I, yeah. Uh... Hello. I uh hello. Yep. I I, I actually couldn't uh, come up with a uh, uh, work. I kind of couldn't understand the basics. After the class got over, uh, I mean, uh, when you explained, I was able to understand. But later on. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out what is what. Okay. Uh, do you have anything you want to show, or you don't? Uh, I don't. Okay. Then, then that's fine. You, if you have a question, you can ask me later or something. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Good. 
Uh, well, well, you can just uh, uh, do the se uh, self introduction. So, you where are you from? And you I'm I'm from India. Uh, I, I I'm having a background in architecture. I've uh, done my BR in Chennai, Anna University. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's Good. pretty about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for participation. So, okay. And then, okay. So now, uh, we move on to the next person. Um, the next, uh, Hassan Ahmed. Are you there? Let me check the Zoom participant. I don't necessarily see the name. Okay, if uh, if uh, I hear no response, I move on next person. Um, next, uh, next, Ihan Huang. I don't know if I see that on the Zoom list either. Okay, and if I don't hear anything next, Cheng Yu Chen. Hi, sir. Um, Hi. Hello, Satoru Sensei. Um, I got some problem with my processing, but I got a very draft one, and uh, I got a, a start problem with it, and I cannot open the processing right now, so I have to oh. send you the code, and could you please help me to run the code on your computer? Okay, let me try that. Um, you mean you yeah. send me on my email? Um, okay. No, it's in the it's in the uh, file folder. Oh, in the in Zoom. window. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me yeah. open that. Let me download. And it got a problem like this, and I got a screenshot. Could you please? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Did you make make this problem before? Uh no. Wait. What? What? What problem you have? Where you cannot open processing itself? Is that the yes. Uh, yes. I made this uh, before this processing crash up, uh, crash down. Oh. So I cannot okay. open it right now. I don't. I never had the issue. Uh, you uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, you could reinstall processing, or you could. Uh, you might need to restart the computer or something. But anyway, let me, I got your code, so let me run this. Wait, let me check if, uh, if it's running all right. Okay. And in that case, I need to share my screen. Okay. Let me share my screen first. Oh yeah, I'm Chen 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 Yu from South China University of Technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my major okay. is architecture. Yeah. And Good. Uh, do you see my screen? And I got your code. Yes, yes, I can. And okay. it's it's just like yeah. uh, I changed the the parameter in the road uh, function, and now it's like uh, drawing a two small. A half circle and draw a big yep. half circle, and it can just stretch out. Okay. More and yeah, more. Shape, nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you? How did you get there? You you just keep changing number, and you got this, and you so this is uh, nice. Thank you. I think so, this is nice. Yeah. Um, I'll fix my okay. processing. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, yeah, you kind of need to do that soon for the workshop. But yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, are yeah. good and yeah, that's all. Do you have any questions? Anything? Um. Uh, I, I was just fi uh, figuring out, want to figuring out what the numbers means. So I'm right. trying. Yeah, it just uh, takes time. Well, you, you never fully understand the budget. You just it takes time to understand kind of intuitively. So yeah. yeah thank you, sir. All right, mm. thank you. Okay, we move on to the next. So next, uh, uh, KT Manik. First, let me check if that name shows up in Zoom. Not necessarily. Uh, if I don't hear, I move on next person. Uh, next, uh, Kim Wang Wang. Is that different? 
Is that you? I'm calling my name. My name is Chen Chen. Is that one? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, no, no. It looks similar, but no. But <laughs> you, I think it, yeah, you can start that because I don't see another similar in, in one person. I don't see another one person. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, it happens a lot when, when people are calling my name. Um, so I'm going to change my screen. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chen Chen, and I graduated from Tongji University yet last year uh, with a Bachelor of Architecture degree. So um, I am now having some summer sessions. So it's kind of has not overlapping with this class. So by try, in terms of trying the assignment, I didn't have so many change, but I just want to show what I have. Um, so let me just run it. Um, sorry. I just make it kind of <laughs> a lot of agencies and then try to see what's happening. Um, so what I did is to kind of merge all these tutorials, like some of these tutorials together and then try to fix some colors and then um, try to observe. I also tried to add the like a rotation in Z, uh, sorry, X and Y axis so that you would have like other dimensions instead of just a uh, plane. And also, well, nothing so special, just trying to, um, um, so for the cold part, it's just like, um, um, I close the probability um, because if I did that, it was so random. Um, and also the agent was like created in a circle um, and make it bigger. And also um, for, 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 the, for the join line parts, it just um, changed the parameters and get the uh, X axis and Y axis rotation so that uh, it gives the results like this. Um, yeah, I think that's so much of what I did. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think uh, I like the result and then I see, uh, I mean, I understand you, you try many number of changes and then, but you, I think you have good judgment of like, uh, you have nice like a uh, nice spacing between them and then they, they are each individual motion they are, you can still see they are not, not color and the color is nice. So yeah, that looks good. And then especially the part, uh, actually to go 3D, so we, I didn't really show 3D version yesterday, but to go 3D, one way to go is uh, rotating in 3D, meaning not rotating not in Z axis, but uh, rotating around the Y axis or X axis. Well, actually you can, it, it, the rotation method can take any uh, angle or no, any, axis of as a vector so yeah so that that makes rotating so out of xy plane but anyway yeah looks uh, looks uh, good work uh you. you have any question or anything um for now i think not really all right then good uh, good work okay then let me move on to next person uh next person you think ling uh you there oh uh, hey can you hear me yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, I'm, I'm Ling Yuti and uh, I'm also from the South China University of Technology. And, and I'm gonna to show you my work. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I see that. Uh, so I only make and I change the colors. So we start from the green to the red color, in the X of flowers. Yeah, that's Good. all. Yeah. Did you have anything you struggled or like uh, uh, how you mm. describe anything? Is that fine? For now, uh, it's not yet. Yeah, I don't right. have okay. any problems. Mm. Okay, that's good. Uh, you have any question? Uh, no, thanks. Okay, good. Okay, let me move on to next. Uh, next, uh, Yukie Takasu. Uh, you there? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Um, let me share my screen. 
screen first, yes. Okay, um, my name is Yuki Takasu. I'm from Japan and I just graduated AA school in tech. And now currently I joined the Keio University. And let me, yes, okay. So first, I, I try to make like um, crescent moon shape and I try to change the number and try, try to make that uh, crescent shape. And then it's not really perfect, the shape, but yeah, this is what I get. You have another quote to show, or that's that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, then the, I say, like, uh, um, yeah, controlling or changing number is one thing, but like uh, getting something and then judging that's good or bad, or you like it, not, not or another thing. And in this case, what I think interesting is that the crescent moon thing is somehow kind of just touching to next one. So, yes. which is just, which, which you could do by just calculating number but it's a bit too much to do meaning you just uh, fine tune the number to that happen so but anyway yeah because of that, that this uh, pattern looks really nice if you keep running the whole pattern look very 2d it doesn't really show much of like a not singular sequence it's really, really look like 2d pattern so that's nice i, I mean as a result of this just a uh, nice coordination of them. so good uh, good work any question thank you no. All right, cool. All right, thank you. Then uh, next we move to uh, Lee Shin Wang. Uh, not sure the pronunciation is good. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, uh, so, uh, at first I will introduce myself. Um, I'm from Tongji University. I will graduate uh, this year. And uh, I can share my screen. Uh, I just uh, finished the whole tutorial uh, from the website. Uh, just try a few arguments, and I want, I want my question is: uh, How could I uh, set the, the the camera movement? Because uh, I want to the, the camera to follow the animation to move uh, with the with the with the movement of the uh, dimension uh, of the frame. So maybe yep. is there some some way for the camera to move follow the the frame? Yes. Um, actually, I'm gonna talk about uh, like uh, make, uh, exporting animation, etc. Later, actually later, meaning after doing the old agency, after before like uh, your design work project. But anyway, basically, what what gonna happen is that uh, what actually what I usually do is I make another agent, which is a camera agent, in which I give a specific move to do. Or one 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 easy thing you can do is you you keep hitting. F key to focus in whole thing when it grows and then that kind of follows. But, but it's manual. Um, but you, you can also do that in the code. You can have agent keep focusing every single time frame and then capture, you can do that too. Uh, but I, I'm gonna show it in, in two days or something. So yeah, I'm gonna show it later. Um, anything about the agent, you, something you struggle or you like it, not like it? Difficult case, what question? Okay, about, I see. About the thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So uh, I'm still trying uh, about the, this uh, uh, whole logic of this uh, uh, this, this, this library. Uh, I see uh, the main the main idea of this library is, is using the, the agent, but uh, I'm wondering uh, uh, if there are any uh, better way to set up a, a whole a bunch of uh, class of uh, agents. Uh, 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 other than like the, the four loop uh, of the of the, this way, is there any other way? Because if the the uh, uh, if if the agent uh, I, I know the agent can create the, the agent if I, I didn't delete it. Uh, so if there is a, a another way, if I use the uh, agent to uh, to to form into a pattern and uh, the, uh, and the, and uh, use that nine or pattern to form in into a series of, of agent. Can I, can, 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 yeah. Is yeah, there any way? Many, yeah, 
there's many other ways also like for example which is not standard but like uh, the the first president uh, uh or was doing was like she had another geometry to start with in grasshopper and then she used like uh, grasshopper points to start the agent that's one yeah right i see too. i see yeah and then but... other would be other would be you could have certain um, you still using for loop but you could use uh, some like a uh, uh, for loop uh, uh, you know uh, science sign stuff so like for example, yesterday, or well, one of the examples on the tutorial was starting with the circular location. So that was just controlled by a sine cosine. But you could write kind of static pattern in the beginning using for loop and then parameter and sine cosine or some other mathematical function to do draw one kind of initial frame pattern, then start. You can do it. But okay. that's one thing. So, but actually, usually it's easiest to start with. Um, if you have specific like a pattern in your mind, not algorithmic, not algorithmic one, but something you design, you can import that pattern from Rhino file. I say so. So yes, uh, yeah. Somehow, yeah. Or upon started with uh, was well, generate code from Grasshopper, which is quite uh, uh, interesting to do. But you could uh, this part. I was. I'm not going to. I wasn't going to explain the tutorial. But you could in export point in. Grasshopper, no, no, grasshopper, in Rhino, and you can import that point in uh, processing, and you can use that point location as a starting point of agent. That's possible to do. Um, I if I have time, I'll explain. Um, but anyway, that's another. Thing. So that's one. Um, but I, but uh, but some related topic is that when you are, well, we, we are, what we are trying to do here is just to generate interesting pattern or geometry at the end. So uh, articulating initial location is one thing, but not only one thing. So articulating mm. agent behavior is another thing. So actually, it's actually a combination of that. So, so meaning uh, even, even when you have one agent, like from 0, 0, 0 to start, you could have some agent which creates really complex, interesting uh, pattern. So, so it's balanced. So yeah, you, you can of course, yeah, uh, focus on the setup. So this uh, first part. So inside the setup, that's uh, that's about setting up initial condition. So articulating initial condition is one thing, and about articulating behavior for later progress is another thing. But that best practice is just do both in a good balance. Okay. But anyway, uh, that's good. Ida, Ida, uh, answering your question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. No okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me move on to the next okay. part. So next, uh, next, uh, suppose we go. Um, let me check Zoom participant. Uh, hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, so I started my code. Actually, I wanted to um, make kind of the uh, intersecting pyramids thing. So this is how it goes. I was just playing around with the uh, square thing. Um, square code and I just added the height around and used a loop at the start. So it forms kind of these four uh, intersecting pyramids. Yeah, I was just experimenting around with uh, different values in the same code and just matched one code with another and this is what came out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's okay. So yeah, 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 I think yeah, it's great that yeah, 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 uh, you, yeah, you had your idea in before writing code and you actually could make it, which is a quite a uh, great ability to do. 
especially like if you know you want to create pyramid shape and you see the square pattern and you what you need to do is move up in the direction and you find figure out where to change the value and that's actually that's, that's good um, understanding so yeah I, I mean kind of uh i mean it looks simple when it's a four pyramid but but that level of control shows a uh, good skill of yours so yeah uh great work do you have any question yeah that's about it. Um, yeah, and I'm Swoshi Ghosh. I'm from India. I'm a third year student in Architecture College. Thank yep. you. All right, thank you very much. All right, then let me move to the next person. Next person, Yuji Tang. Hi, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yep. Uh, hi, let me share my screen. So I'm Yujie from uh, Singapore, and I graduated from SUTD. Uh, so basically, I was I was just messing around with the, with the script, lah, right? Um, and then I, I I got this like pattern that I thought was quite cute. So I just tried to uh, kind of figure out how to uh, put it radially. And then I think when I was trying to do that, I I I, I controlled the Z to C because I, I I can't really tell how um which which uh shape is coming first so I just put a like a I value for the Z to tell like uh the sequence of the for loop yeah cool. yeah that, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I like the yeah you attempt to change in 3D and yeah, actually 3D shape look also look good uh, in addition to the um then yeah and then, yeah each each symbol not symbol but each shape looks interesting and then nice facing uh yeah you could uh because you figure out how to do how to change in the direction in the initial for loop part you could also figure out how to move in 3d in the behavior if you change something in the in the update method yeah you're gonna go some somewhere although it might totally change but anyway yeah mm. that's good uh good work uh, any question you have uh i guess i was wondering how to change uh the size of each of these uh, right like if i want to scale it to a multiple yeah. That's yeah, that, that's a good idea. Uh, that that relates to the 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 answer I gave to the first uh, presenter, which is uh, so the size is related to the initial direction length. So in in the step yeah setup part. Ah, so okay. The, yeah, second, I understand. Second V, second back vector. If you multiply something to it, that become Bigger. So if you multiply like a two to actually you cannot just multiply two or three because you want to change the size. So you have you have four loop of I, I. I have to so you, multiply from outside. You if you multiply i there, you're gonna change the size. Although it's gonna be too big, but you're gonna change the size. Can you do that quickly? Can you multiply i after before or after cosine and sine? I multiply yeah, another to the sine. Uh, yeah, it's good sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what that's what I was going to say after <laughs> you run that. Although, All right. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, still too big, but yeah, but you see the change, right? Mm, yeah. So yeah, that's that, that's how you change the size. Okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good work. Uh. Okay. Next. Next, Meng Yao Yang. Um, let me check if the person is on the Meng Yao Yang. Okay, I don't see it on the list and I don't hear. So, okay, let me move on to next. Uh, next, Alan Kim. Are you there? Yes. Hello. Yeah, uh, I hear you. Uh, let me share a screen. Yep. Uh, 
my current RMIT student who is interested in code and computational design. Uh, and let me show my code. Uh, uh, first, uh, first assignment, I want to use uh, previously uh, lesson course and I use some swallowing and uh, multiple instance initializing and conditional transformation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also give this uh, JTX uh, vector. So uh, in three dimensional perspective view, uh, my code show this uh, shapes, pattern. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's over and. Okay, yeah, that looks good. I mean, the, especially the, you, you captured one like, as, a, as a whole shape looks uh, nice or 3D uh, in a sculpture way. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's good idea to put, make the uh, one into the direction. It's totally not totally, but uh, I mean, it totally make it 3D. So, so yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, the sensibility to be like adjust and pick this uh, final option is good. Do you have any question, technical or anything? Um, uh, I'm first in processing coding, and is there any way to select select uh, special for this for uh, point? What do you mean special 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 what? Uh, uh, if I want to start the half of point group first and mm -hmm. second or uh, maybe two seconds after uh, another half groups are start after that. Oh, so you want to stop some of them and then see and you want to restart uh, next? After oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you could do, so it's a bit tricky. I mean, first, uh, the super um, quick, lazy way is just to hit enter key and then capture animation and then we hit enter again. But uh, if you want to do the encode, you, it's something about with the, uh, the something is the uh, time condition. So if it's, combi it's combination with if condition and time, like if you don't create new child in the agent, it doesn't move or well, it doesn't create, create new one. So for example, like if you put if condition around the new my agent, and um, actually maybe whole thing something. Actually, I, I just tell you conceptually. So actually it doesn't, it take a while to figure out how to write. But yeah, inside update, if you put like a if condition and then I did the time and if this not, time is bigger than something and one smaller than something and you don't create new child, child agent or you don't transform or you don't uh, create new agent. But after some time you can do that, then in that case, you will stop for that moment. Uh, if you want that, that, that course specifically, I can uh, give you maybe later after class or something. But anyway, conceptually that is that. You can do oh. that in the oh, course. Thanks, thanks. Thank and you. if you just want to capture animation, you can just hit enter key to stop for a moment. That's a quick way. Um, okay, okay, and thank you very much. Uh, good work, and let me move on to next. Then. Next person, I think next is last person, uh, Albert Chen, right there. Okay, I Several chain on Zoom.
I see Chen A on Zoom participant, so you are trying to talk. I don't hear you. Now I see you unmute your mic. But I don't hear you. Some audio issues or well, you can just start your sh uh, sharing your screen as well. Oh, you, you, I see your message on the chat. You have problem sharing screen. Okay. Can you uh, at least talk on the microphone? I, I, and you can, you can also send me First of all, you already sent me the image, so I'm gonna download. Um, can you speak on the microphone? I don't hear. Okay. Uh, you can uh, you can send me the processing file or the capture of that on Zoom. Okay, you uh, mute the microphone, but I don't hear you. Yeah, I can. You can send me the uh, code, either email or Zoom or yeah. Let me check my email. I think he sent me and give me the file right now. Uh, okay, me why he's working on send me the file. Actually, he just said he sent the uh, email. Yeah, I got the file. Um, okay, why I'm say, uh, preparing the, let me just uh, talk about what we're gonna do for today's workshop. Uh, we got just uh, moving on the say, uh, just next step in the multi-agent algorithm and then Especially we are, the topic of that uh, today is the uh, interaction. Also, before the I just noticed I also need to talk about um, branching. Branching is something about uh, something, um, I say, well, just one more step from what we are doing yesterday. But anyway, uh, I got um, I got the call, so let me open that and then let me share the screen. So yeah, I'm starting the shit uh now. Screen. Yeah. Okay, then now uh, his code is this one, the Remy one. This code. It's starting. Um, taking away. Okay, this actually that's three D. Um, yeah, it's a spiral thing. Yeah, it looks nice. Wait. Um. So there's outer one and the inner one and they're going up and it does that stop. The duration 200, yeah, that, that. good, that's nice. Um, uh, let me run another one, we have one more. Uh, 
how about if you have something you want to talk about this you can chat on the zoom and i can read and let me run another one however i lost the chat window um Okay, the second one is coming was behind. Oh, it's already down. Okay, good. Um looks good. Uh then 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 I want to see if there's anything on chat. Okay, and you also send me the image. Okay, then I'm not sure what this is. Um, uh, maybe just, I just give you the comment uh, on the code. Um, yeah, it looks good. And then I'm not sure what that is. Um, then yeah, the, the circular motion is especially this like uh, circular thing going in and out. I think that's the difference of the be beginning. Uh, starting point, uh, like here. Somehow, yeah, you use tangent. But yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that looks nice. The color is nice as well. And if you try to make a bit cylindrical uh, geometry, and if you achieve that, that's amazing. So, have the control. So yeah, that's good, uh, good work. And then let me then, oh, actually you, are, you have some comments here. Um, so uh, brief description of the code. You wanted to generate a serial tower typology. Yeah, that's good intention. Uh, translation and then the height is control via scaling of the axis. Uh, one more, more like a duration, but yeah, good. Uh, great that it's great that you try to make tower and you you got that. Um, you, you made it happen. Uh, maybe one comment uh, would be like if you feel like so right now this is a, a very cylindri uh, cylindrical thing, and then that's mostly because of the. Um, agent is uh, keeping their size same so so if you are uh, interested in like a tapering slightly thinner on the top that can be achieved by scaling the size down by multiplying point, point 0.999 or something but anyway um but also not guaranteed to maintain that uh, central axis that might shift i don't know until you try but anyway uh good work thank you very much so then that uh, kind of concludes assignment review. Also, if I miss anybody, and if you have your assignment work done and you want to show, you can speak up. Now, let me stop my sharing screen. And if I don't hear anything, then I move on to the tutorial content of today. OK, then. Then I think I need to share screen again. Um, okay, then let me do that. So, okay. So now today, a uh, new topic and then um, the main thing I'm gonna talk about would be, would be um, branching first and the second the interaction of that. So interaction is a, a concept is very important because it's about how each agent can talk to each other, not really talk, but like a check each other function. And then, but um, the main thing actually, but the most, 
typical use of interaction is、uh, collision detection. If you don't want it, lines to overlap,、uh, you check if there's any other agent if,、uh, located there, and if there, if there is a、uh, delete other agent or delete、uh, or stop your agent. But anyway,、uh, that's the thing. Although, of course, you can set up the agent behavior to like, change the condition or state based on other agent location, like Swarm. Although, we don't, I don't intend to cover Swarm、uh, in the workshop. But anyway,、um, OK, a y then that tutorial code we use today. Is still inside the multi agent algorithm inside igo.jp tutorial page. And then, so first, I want to show branching first. But、uh, yesterday, we are mostly going through this page、uh, multi agent algorithm interact method. That page is the main tutorial page of、uh, today. Then, then. There's a stuff starting with、um, starting with interact method explanation. But before that, I want to go back to the code we had yesterday.、Um, where is my code I had yesterday? I guess this. So, I think I, the, this would be the last code I had yesterday.、Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday is that just in terms of coding practice, I didn't show or、uh, make note that I, you should frequently save your code.、Uh, so, yesterday I didn't, I didn't save code、uh, until I finished the workshop,、uh, which is bad practice. So, you, so, I didn't really have the kind of progress or second something.、Uh, so, you, you should frequently save that, not, not just to lose or crash your computer and lose everything, but it's more,、uh, I mean, that, that's an important thing to prevent as well. But another thing is like if you keep changing and then sometimes you feel like you had a better one before, like a two step before, but you, I mean, you can undo that,、uh, although you might、uh, get lost. Well, so, like every kind of step you think, okay, this is one thing and this is another thing, if you keep、uh, saving a、uh, uh, different code, that's kind of good practice in this kind of uh, design um, exercise. But anyway, that's one thing.、Uh, but, okay, so I want to talk about the branching. So, right now,、uh, right now, I have many agents because I have this、uh, whole loop thing. But I want to do just one. So, I, I'm going to.、Um, I could just say number one. You can just pick up whatever code you have yesterday and then、uh, not necessarily the full loop. Or if you, I mean, you can go back to the tutorial by yesterday and you can just pick one code with、uh, agent, a single agent starting. And I can just remove the full loop as well. But anyway, for example, I have one agent right now. And that is, I think that's a kind of rotating agent. And、uh, so I have, I have tons of code or kind of commented out code there, but so mine's、uh, one, like a single agent of mine look like this.、Uh, you are, mine look different. Actually, you can, you can play with your assignment code, although、uh, don't forget to save as another name because you might lose your. Assignment work.、Um, so, one thing I want to talk about about the branching is that so, so right now this is Sakira code, but what if I want to have branch? Branch means that this line goes to another direction out of this. So, then branching is that I mean, kind of notation about the、uh, Geometry, but in behavior, the meaning of the branching is basically to create two children. That's branching. Although, another problem is so right now I have two child agents created here. 
But one problem is that they are going to exact same direction, the exact same location. So even if I run this, it just goes same line. So that's not what I want. I want another child to go the other way. So to do that, you kind of need to do this uh, direction to transformation one more time for one more child. So, and to do that, I might need to set up kind of something like here. So I have this direction two for the first child. I might want direction three for the second child. And copy and paste. Actually, I don't need to change. I don't need to change the position because I keep the same position. But just in case, I do that as well. So I have I copy and paste it. Oh, by the way, I um I kind of expect you to uh, follow what I'm doing on your side with your code. But anyway, I mean that's a tutorial session. But anyway, um, so. Position three is for the position for the second child, and then for direction three is the direction for the second child. So I can use that for the second child. Although I might want to do the transformation uh, move for that as well, but I can try it first without doing anything. And actually, let me run this first and the meaning of this. Also, there's two things I have to talk about this about this behavior or this uh, two child situation. And I might need to stop early very quickly. Uh, already too late. Um, okay. Uh, very too late. Um, you this doesn't look like anything comparing to before, but what happened was, first of all, okay, first thing to say, uh, branching, is, branching is chaotic or heavy or super heavy because each agent, um, each single step create two child agent. So first step, one agent become two, create two agent. And that two agent create four and the four, I mean, total four and the four eight, and it's so in 10 times second, it's 1024, and that, that. so like a two in 28 million. So um, it's super heavy. So creating branch every single time step is usually problematic. Um, so if it, branching sounds like it's three, and then it is, then this, you imagine that certain kind of uh, density of leaf or branches but it's quite controlled it's uh, plus they don't collide each other they stop or they don't make branches if they are too guarded or something well possibly it's uh, connected to the uh, solar energy but anyway so simply creating a uh, two child agent or or branching every single time is uh, usually too much so so uh, that's one thing. Another thing is that, which is here, um, another thing is that um, you see this straight line in the beginning. That straight line is because I did not change direction of direction three. I changed the direction two with a transformation, with a rotation and a multiplication, which is this uh, kind of inner circular spiral. That's the first child move. And also there's uh, another thing happening inside. Um, let me stop that, this is getting heavy. So, um, but if you keep continue uh, doing, it doesn't crash your computer. It could, but it doesn't crash your computer. It, the processing gonna get to the maximum memory use and they gonna crash. Uh, well, you're gonna show the red text error message here and it does a uh, maximum memory something. So, but anyway, the one thing I want to do, uh, if I'm just uh, continuing the kind of sequence of the tutorial from yesterday, one thing I want to do, I want to change the direction uh, second child. So I want to do something similar to that. Actually, I'm gonna, I gonna go simple. I just want to rotate the second child agent. This part is not really on the tutorial, just uh, additional thing to 
talk before going to interaction. Um, so I want to rotate um, the child agent. Okay, I'm using random. Maybe I want to go the other way. So the first child agent go is turn what bent in one direction uh, with random number. I want to go the other direction. Other direction would be like negative angle number. So I bend or rotate the second direction to negative angle. So that would change the straight line to something else. Although I still have too many lines. Um, it's coming here. So let me stop. Um, so you see now that the straight line changed and I'm not really sure if it's stopped. Um, it's not. Uh, so yeah, that, that was, so that's the second one. And it's kind of looking like three branch with that angle change. And then, so that's the one thing. Well, yeah, that's one thing. Then, but still, still you see the main, main problem, main problem with too many lines, too many branches. So I, so making two child agent would be too much. So what should I do? Making one would be just a one line and making two is too much. So we want to have one point something which you can already do that. But the way you can do is uh, one thing you can do to limit number of branch or number of split is uh, you can use the um, if condition and then to uh, two major different ways to do. Uh, one thing is you can use ig dot time and then you don't create child every single time. Actually, second child every single time, but maybe every tenth time frame that percentage. Uh, uh, symbol or character we used yesterday. So in this case, yeah, second child is created only once out of 10 time frame. So it should decrease number of branch. Where is processing coming here? So, all right. First, now it's not that much branching because it's rotate the first one rotate too much. And then um, actually, I, by the way, it's doing what I told it to do, but just because I wanted to make it more kind of a branch tree looking, tree looking thing just for ease of explanation, I, may, I decrease the rotation. So I don't need to use, I can use static number angle. I use the first rotation 0 0.01 uh, of pi, which would be like 1.8 degree something. Uh, second one I put minus 5. Point. Oh, by the way, you don't need to really use pi, it's just my kind of custom. Um, let me see how it's gonna look. So, okay, still too much, um, zero, zero, one. Um, I can keep this one, this one. So, I first skip it too much, but, but, okay, zero, zero, one. Or maybe once or in tens would be too much. So, uh, okay. First of all, I, I don't. Oh, actually, that was here doing the major rotation. So, let me change back. So um, first, it's doing the one tenth of uh, branching. So maybe the the child should turn more. So point one on five. Then, but anyway, uh, actually, the, uh, my attempt to make it look like more branchy is just 
for ease of explanation. But so now it's a, uh, I mean, not, not really nice, but it's just more balanced or well, kind of not, not too dense, although it's getting too dense there. So it's uh, another problem. But uh, so to make some branching geometry, or if you don't want to chaotic thing, you need to limit amount of branching. And one more, one more uh, way to control that is uh, using the prob probability, probability switch we had that with uh, I round dot PCT for the percentage. So like in a uh, percentage of maybe 5% probability, you branch out. So in this case, In this case, not necessarily periodically. So you see a uh, randomness in terms of density and some kind of uh, variation there, but that's a, uh, yeah, because of the random probability. So that's how uh, you branch in the first step. Um, but I mean, first, if this is good for you for certain purpose, that's good. But if, if you start to see, um, still too much and then especially if you don't want them to intersect that's where the issue of interaction comes in so for to check interaction or well, actually to check um, intersection what agents need to do is for example for example this is inter uh, intersecting here in this case, one of agents need to stop. And then actually food to stop is another issue or another point of control. But the typical way is uh, if this comes later, the first one stays, actually if, if, if it's already there, it's kind of, I mean, you could delete them, but you, it's easier for you to stop in the control. So if it's for new agent, so the logic is a new agent, checks, I think that horizontal one is a new one. New agent checks the, if old agent or older agent stays in the location where you are going. That's a logic. But problem is the how to know, I mean in code, how to know where other agents are. So inside this update method, inside, inside your update method we are uh, write, writing yesterday. There's only agent about yourself. I mean, yourself is basically that you are just checking your, your own location or your own position and your own direction. And then it's also about a child agent, a new, new war agent. There is no other mention about other existing agent or older agent existing in the space. So this update method cannot show other agent, but there's another method called interact. That's where you can see other existing agent. So now we move on to this method or this tutorial page. So let me stop this one and then I should save a different name. Then I should save in different days. And usually the sketch should have some name of which means something. Oh, sketch branch. Okay, so so about the interaction. So so this tutorial page we use today is all about interact method. So update was a method. So this was one component inside your class template. So first part was the data part and second part was constructor the initialization part and the third part was update. So interact is another part you can have. You, you don't need to, but you can have if you want. So then that's 
uh, update was named update, but the interact is named interact. I mean, that, this is just specific to IGO library. As a library, you define the terminology. But so template is this uh, interact. Then actually, there's something about something longer uh, here. So this interact method is something different. Actually, let me copy and paste in the code, which might be easier to explain. Uh, copy this part, which doesn't contain anything. But I'm adding to the existing code, which uh, you don't need to, but you can. Um, so this is the interact method, the fourth component inside class, start from top. Actually, it doesn't need to be before update, but that's just my kind of practice or behavior. Um, that's actually that's because uh, inside the agent, inside the agent actual behavior or execution of the coding, they check interaction first before doing the update. So if you, because if you want to create new child, you want to check the con situation before creating child. So interact is actually executed before update every single time frame. So that's kind of why I tend to put this code here, just to mentally match that image. So. One thing is the one new thing is here. Interact doesn't have empty parentheses. Interact has something inside parentheses, which is a new thing for us to do. Update has no nothing inside parentheses. And then the minimum parentheses is some I kind of shortly explained yesterday. It's about input data. Or well, it's more about the passing data from somewhere to inside of the method. Um, so yesterday, this uh, my agent initialization, I mean, constructor had these two input. If it's separated by comma, that another data, one data here, another data here, I mean, variable, more specifically. Then, then the, look, the moment it was passing the data was here, when you are writing this code in the setup, it was the moment you actually creating the vector data and the passing into this initialization code. By the way, creating agent or use, you, using constructor is something called um, instantiation because it's creating instance of agent because this is template, this is instance. Um, that part, if you're interested, just check just um, Java coding basic. Anyway, um, so in this interact method, um, this array, this, so this has one input. It's long, but it's there's no comma, so it's just space and there's something here. From here to here is one thing. It's a data type, and then from here to here is one name or variable. And then actually, it doesn't need to have the space here because that was because just a HTML messed up that format. So this is one data type. Um, so array list, so there's one name array list and highlight in different color. This array list is the data type of list. List is some data contain multiple data inside one variable. So um, then this, this is coming, this uh, comes from Java language. So processing is built on Java language. So processing is kind of sort of language, but it's built on another language, the base language is Java. So that base language has this um, array list. And then there's a there's an array and also there's a list, but there's also array list, it's confusing, but we just use array list uh, in this tutorial or most of the tutorial in, in Azure. And then, so this contains multiple data. And then it also, or well, you can, or you don't necessarily need to, but you can also specify what kind of data is supposed to be in that list. And then this part is a bit a uh, tricky part of Java language, which is, um, is actually also called template, but um, it says the, the type of data inside list is OI dynamics, which is, you don't need to remember, this is just whatever internal logic inside the IGO library. This is a parent class of agent. So not only agent, but some agent like thing can be contained. But basically what it, this does, this input, that this comes from the IGO server inside, which is running whole simulation, which you don't see. Um, this, so this agent, 
data type is array list of i dynamics. This contains whole agent existing inside the simulation currently. Um, if the agent is deleted, it's not there. But if it's there, I mean, if it's not deleted, if, if it's just, uh, alive, it, it's there. So, so this is the one you can check if there is any other agent in front of you or not. Uh, but problem is uh, you don't know how many there uh, unless you check the number. And then it's possibly, or especially when, especially when uh, I have that bunch. Uh, let me just make, run this to explain. Uh, well, uh, take, let me just check what's happening here. Yeah. Um, so, so problem is that um, there's many agent meaning. If you want to check uh, intersection here, if you are your agent at the moment, uh, you are looking at is this agent. And if you want to decide if you, you or as agent, want to draw a line here or you should stop, you want to check this agent. But problem is that right now there is maybe several hundred agents. And you don't know who is located where until you check the location with X, Y, Z. So you kind of need to check and then all of the agent, basically. So hundreds of them. And then the agent, this, this list doesn't the order of the agents in this list doesn't necessarily correspond to proximity or uh, age, actually most likely corresponding age, but not guaranteed. And then, so you don't know, like if you check the first agent in this list, it might not be somewhere close. It might be somewhere here or actually most likely the first one here. But um, so you kind of need to check every single one because you don't know where until you see the X, Y value of that. Then you need to check all of them if you want to make sure if it's intersecting with somebody or not. I mean, if it's a probabilistic, then you check the first 100, I mean, you, you could do that, but it doesn't guarantee the intersection uh, is avoided. So then, so what you need to do from here is, actually, so now I'm moving on to the other section in the tutorial code. And so I start writing something inside, or I can copy and paste as well. Um, this thing, oh, by the way, so this intersection is a very important concept when you work with agent and then can be useful. Uh, I mean, trickier than update, but can be useful. But the, in, in this workshop later in the design project, well, when we move on the hierarchical uh, well, well, clock stack agent I showed yesterday, it, it does uh, the collision detection automatically, meaning I already prepared the code for that. And then that's the location you don't need to worry about. So you don't need to really um, write code on this intersection for the later design practice. So you don't need to worry too much. Plus this is a bit, uh, yeah, quite tricky, but uh, so, so I'm, I'm just, well, today we are talking about this because this is just an important uh, concept. And then this is gonna be useful later, not in the workshop, Later in the in your practice, if you want to expand, well, actually, if you want to make your own uh, in, uh, agent, and then this will be important. That's why I'm talking about what today we are talking about that. So that's a that's a kind of context. And then, but example, like, for example, if you want to, you have like an urban agent or something. If you want to check uh, proximity in terms of building or other human agent or vehicle, what you need to do is uh, in that case you need to be the uh, human, if you are thinking about human agent walking around the city, you, if you have a human agent, but you also have the vehicle agent and the building agent, actually the building static thing is also agent to be checked. And then traffic ride agent, etc. And you can write code for the human agent to check building agent, uh, what building is in front of you, or a traffic ride agent, if that state of the light, etc then decide what to do for the human agent. So that's how you set up the interaction. 
or that's how you kind of implement under the framework of agent with update and interact. Then, then anyway, uh, by the way, I might talk about like uh, how to check the building agent versus some uh, traffic uh, light agent, etc. Soon. But anyway, so going back to the code. So what I need to do, so actually from here, I just uh, copy and paste the code. So this is the thing um, you would need to write to check all of the agents. So let me show that. Let me first stop the processing. It's getting heavy. Uh, so, so I, as I mentioned, I need to check all of them. So what you need to do is, so this, so this one agent contains multiple data, multiple agent, actually all of the agent existing in the simulation. So you need, you use for loop to iterate through each single one of agent. And this is how you do. So yesterday we saw the for loop uh, for the first time uh, in the, if you are new to code, coding. So like this one, uh, basic, uh, format is same. You 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 use the uh, four keyword and then start with int, which represent represent integer, and then variable i is defined here, uh, which a conventional called the counter agent and uh, or not agent, yeah, counter variable or counting variable, and then so that so starts from zero, but maximum number of the loop is defined by the total number of agent inside here. So this array list data type has a method to tell you how many data are inside of the list. So this dot size parenthesis, uh, empty parenthesis, is the method. So if you say, yeah, if you write agent dot size, that means the total number of agents. If you say the 200 of them, this gives you 200 number, and then you can use that for the for loop. Then you increment i plus plus that that's a counting variable, and then that's a just basic format of i um for loop. But yeah, so this is the part is checking the whole thing, a whole each agent inside the array list. But there's something more you have to do. Um, one thing is that this contains any agent, and then. Right now, we are only making um, one type of agent. We are just creating this my agent. So in that case, you don't kind, of, you don't necessarily need to do that. But sometimes when you start using like a um, multiple agent, you can have like my agent one, my agent two. Uh, it's possible to have two different agents and they're running uh, in the same time at the same time. Or if you start using a uh, physical simulation on a particle. Uh, I don't talk about in the tutorial uh, workshop, but uh, in, in the tutorial page, there's other section about the particle and swarm and force field or something. I mean, I just can show you what that is on the tutorial. Um, in the, the fourth part of section contains those uh, tensile uh, simulation or swarm simulation, the force field thing, and the other, I mean, all other stuff. In that case, you have uh, like a force field is one agent, two uh, particle is, uh, another type of agent, the swarm is yet another type of agent, etc. So like there's a gravity agent and the um, attractor agent, etc. So, but in this, if it does exist, you kind of, you need to choose which agent you want to check. And then right now we are, to, we are all only focusing on my agent. I mean, this code is inside my agent and you are checking other my agent instance in the space. So, you need to limit, or you need to choose. So this is the part you choose the agent. It's if condition, so it's con you are conditioning to limit uh, the cases. So this part, uh, agents dot get something, or usually you use i counting variable i. Um, you this just pick picks one element inside the array array list or list of the data. So, so this is the part when you have many stuff containing this array list, this is the part you pick one of them. And then the way you pick is by number. You, so if there's a hundred data inside the array list, you pick the, the first one by zero and then get zero and the second one get one and the third get two and get three and get 99 at the last. 
at the end, and then so but we are using this uh, for loop uh, counting variable. So you put i inside this get method, then that gives you uh, for this you check each of them in a uh, sequential order from beginning to the end. So this is uh, this is so this uh, agent get i represent one of them at the moment. Then the the way you check the check if that is the agent you are writing is by using this uh, keyword instance of, and then this is like kind of give it to equal equal or bigger than some kind of comparison um, operator. So you uh, put this keyword after space, um, single space, but it doesn't matter, but what tab, and then then after that, my agent or agent name or class name, more specifically, you can specify what kind of class name you want to choose. So, so at the moment we are using the my agent, so it, my agent comes here. So that's the second line inside this interactive method. So now you know you are checking only your type of agent, my agent type. Then. Next step, so those part is all kind of coding technical thing. So not too important for design, but just uh, when you want to understand the kind of coding part. Uh, so that's a coding technical part. And then the third part is more technical part, which is, um, so now you you know the current iteration of the agent is your type of agent. But before checking your agent, but actually, what we want to do now is we want to know if this agent is too close or not, if we, we are colliding or not. But before that, um, to know that, you have to check the position of that. But this having position is very unique to your agent. Other agent wouldn't have that. I mean, most of the agents have, but sometimes it doesn't. So you need you want to extract this data out of that agent, but you cannot do before you convert this data type into your data type because this array list is list of this i dynamics agent type and then uh, which is a base agent of i agent or more specifically interface but so meaning meaning this is abstract data so that 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 being abstract um, you kind of need to understand more in the object oriented uh, programming and so but i don't expect you to do that right now so it's a kind of just loosely loosely assume that this is just a i mean abstract in loose sense so you kind of make it specific so to make it specific you use this uh, notation uh, so currently this agent dot get i is an abstract state so you want to uh, make it specific by putting this parenthesis, my agent in the parenthesis, this make it specific. And once you make it specific, you want to keep the specific type here. My agent, so you make another variable in a type of my agent. And then now this is not abstract, this is specifically my agent. Then now you can refer this data inside this my agent. That's the top. Fourth part, this is a, not really technical, it's just as a tricky weird thing uh, in here. One thing you need to remember is this list of agent, list of all agent also contains yourself. Uh, I mean, if you're thinking about your, your agent here, but um, so when you are checking, if anybody is close to you or colliding into you, uh, you are always colliding into you. So you have to exclude yourself to check. So if you don't, you are colliding yourself all the time. And if you stop colliding, you, you don't worry. So, so you have to exclude, you have to uh, skip in case you, the agent you are checking is actually you by this if function. So agent, is the one you are trying to check. This might be others, it might be yourself. And then the way you describe yourself is the keyword this in Java language. So this refers to the instance you are currently working on. So so this so this whole thing uh, uh, means 
this agent variable is not yourself. And then uh, this uh, exclamation mark equal means not equal. And then we saw the equal yesterday, equal, equal. It's the case when you are using like a uh, ID dot time equal, equal 50. That was the comparison if the case is equal. And then exclamation equal is it's the case it's not equal. So if it's not equal to this instance or yourself, then now you can do something here. So now that was a preparation of the interact method. So now I can guarantee this is not, this is other agent in the space in a type of my agent. So now I can check the data inside specific position. So now uh, what we want to do is, um, let me go back to the tutorial page. Not So what I want to do now, what I want to show now is actually a calculation of um, uh, distance. So I want to check the distance of this other agent if it's there too close or not. Um, all the stuff I just mentioned is on the tutorial page so you can check that later as well. Then, then which one should I use? So, By the way, before I go into details about the check, uh, checking distance of that, there's a two, in, two different type of interact method on the tutorial page. There's a one, um, the difference is, um, difference is input. One type of interact method is this array, it, it is having input of array bit. There's another one uh, which has just input of single agent. And, in the array list version, you are using for loop to check all of them. Uh, in the single agent version, you don't need to do that because uh, the serve, internal IGO server already picked one of them, which is not yourself. However, uh, this is dramatic, the single agent version is dramatically slower than array list version. So I usually use this one. This, so the single version is just a ease of writing code for beginners and then but if you are actually running something heavy, you should use array list version. Then, so, I mean, this example use a single version, but the stuff I gonna talk about the checking distance is same here. So I gonna check just uh, talk about this. Also, uh, the type of agent using used in the tutorial code is different. This is a line agent, uh, not, not my agent. And it use a point one point two something. But just as example, um, I do quick writing of that, which matches with my agent. And then maybe later I'm gonna move to line agent. But the next thing I want to do is, uh, I want to check the distance of agent. So, so now uh, what I can do is first, first of all, because uh, this agent, so let me write something here so it's not, this is not on the tutorial page, but just doing on the fly. Um, so now this agent is guaranteed to be my agent and my agent is known to have this position variable. Then this is the 3D vector x, y, z. So I want to know if this position is too close to my current agent. And then, so this is the agent's position. Then my current position is just yours. Um, there's two ways to do it. Uh, there's, when you just simply say POS, this refers to this position because you are inside this agent. Another thing you can do specifically that this is this agent's position, you can type this. Uh, so this is the same keyword it show, it was uh, we appeared here that represent the current instance of the agent you are in. So by the way, in short, I, I usually use a short one, short one although sometimes it's confusing, but so I want to compare the distance between this one to this one, uh, agent position. Then position is a uh, instance or data type of uh, I vector and that I vector. So you are using the rotation and the multiplication and et cetera, the, those methods. And the, in that list of method, you also have the method called distance. They actually, when you type um, dot uh, processing three has this uh, uh, function to list up the possible. Method, so there's many well, 
in less than 100 uh, thing you can do. Um, but one of them is called dist. So although there's many different type of distance to like a two line, these two, yeah, whatever. Um, so dist is actually slightly different version, but um, I have one met uh, method called dist inside the vector. And you can put this position, POS, inside this method. So this returns the distance between position or other agent position to the correct position. Then if you want to, wait, what we want to do is we want to check the collisions and the colli when it's colliding, they are too close. So I want to know if they are too close, meaning this, if this, is, this distance is too small. So first of all, I can compare like, actually this point it's a bit become tricky because I don't know how many distance is to show distance. So, but I want to check it by just um, by doing, by just checking what will happen. Uh, so uh, by the way, uh, in IGEO there is no unit. So it depends on, especially when you work with Rhino file. Rhino file has unit, but IGEO only care about number without unit. So if you are importing from meta Rhino file and exporting to Rhino file, you need to assume everything meta. If you, the file setting is using millimeter, the number shows up here is millimeter. So that kind of how it works. It doesn't really convert based on the um, unit. But anyway, so uh, just temporarily setting the point one is a limit of that growth. And then if it's, uh, then, then I have to put this comparison inside if condition. And so I, I'm doing something uh, equivalent to this line. It's certainly really different, but it's checking the distance and something similar to clearance. We can say the variable set somewhere here. But anyway, um, so I set agent if it's closer than 0.1. And then, so this, so if this if condition matches, that means that too close. Then, but but now we have to decide what to do if that happens. So as I mentioned, if it's, so there's a two different way to stop uh, intersection. One way is to stop other agent, although that agent already exists there. So you kind of need to delete with the line, but that's a bit too much work uh, because the, currently this agent doesn't remember where they put the line. But anyway, um, if you, so easier one is you stop creating line. So meaning you decide to stop yourself. And then one thing you could do is delete yourself here. Also, this is a bit not, it's a bit uh, confusing way in terms of the kind of a uh, uh, execution sequence because if you delete yourself in the middle of interlock, uh, what happened after the for loop and what happened after date, et cetera. But anyway, this is not just a not, not clean way to do so for uh, super technical reason. What you want to do is, Usually, it's best clean up practice to delete uh, agent in update method because this is kind of a wrap up of this time frame. So, and then so what you I want to do is I want to stop agent or delete this agent and not drawing line inside update. So I want to know. Well, so what what what. What I need to do is I need to remember if this one encounter anything close here. I want to remember that. And if I remember that if I, if I did encounter somebody, I want to delete this agent that I want to stop writing line. So to do that, you have to remember something when you, you remember, when you need to remember something, you need to make data inside the agent. So what I want to do is I'm going to create this, um, uh, property variable here. And then what we want to remember is if it collides into somebody or not. And that, that you can do by number, like if it's zero means no collision and one means some collision, but you can also use uh, some data type called Boolean. Uh, that's a bool logic variable type which contains only the value of true or false. And some other language called bool, but uh, Java, and processing called Boolean. And then, so I'm gonna uh, have the variable, something called I name, uh, 
is colliding. Putting is or putting something in uh, is just a naming convention I use. But um, but anyway, something meaningful. So this is the state or Boolean state which shows if it's true or false. Maybe if it's if is colliding is false, that means there's no collision. But if it's true, there is collision. So by the way, you can initialize the value, uh, value here inside the definition state, but you can, you could, there's also another place you could do is the same thing is here, which I'm just showing the example. Um, so, but actually I don't need to do twice. Um, it, this is just a two different way of practice or kind of your, your belief system in coding. But anyway, uh, plus on top of it, uh, in Java, uh, initial value of the Boolean is supposed to be false. So you don't need to do that either. Um, but some people want to be specific. Um, then, so that variable can be used to remember uh, if it's colliding or not. So. So here I say it's colliding because it's too, too close. It's less than 0.1 distance. So I say it's colliding is true. Initially false. So if nothing happens, say false. But if it if happens more than once, could be multiple times, this becomes true. And then if that happens in later uh, step in update, I want to know if that happen if it's colliding. I want to delete this agent and I want to skip uh drawing line. Drawing line part is yeah here. So I want I don't want to go there. And then actually if it's colliding I don't need to do the order uh child uh direction transformation etc. So first of all if it actually there's two different thing you can do. Um, first of all, if it's writing, I decide to delete here. So now, now this instance of agent stop there. It, it disappear out of the list or uh, simulation server. So then another thing is that, um, actually there are several small things I need to do. So if I delete here, if, if, if it's colliding, if I'm delete here, and then that's all right, it's deleted. But problem is that this code continues here. Even if you delete, it doesn't mean it doesn't run up rest of update. If you write code in this way, it's still write, or oh, it's still execute this part, and it still create the line here, um, there. So you have to expect, explicitly skip that part. To do that, one way to do is else. And then you put everything inside the else condition. So in that case, the, um, in that case, indentation is wrong, but in, in that case, um, in that case, it doesn't go in because if condition, if, it, if condition matches, it doesn't go into else uh, clause. Where it's part of the code. Uh, by the way, uh, if you want to intend in then code code line at once, you can select multiple things. You can uh, hit tab key once, and then that just go one tab step. Um, uh, another tip you might or might not know is that if you so instead of so if you tab uh, one more, it just go to the if you want to go one tab less, you can type shift tab and go the other way. So that's something you can do. Um, actually, I just had to do one more. Anyway, so that's that. So now it's uh, inside. So it, now it doesn't uh, create line or child if it quite. Um, but one more thing. Um, oh, actually, no, uh, one option. If you don't want to put everything inside the else, else scrolls and then change the intent, uh, one thing you can do is the, to skip the code. So this is not the way uh, written on the tutorial, but you could do also return. Return is the uh, endpoint of method, meaning if you go here and then go here, this just exists this updated method, so now it doesn't go in, so it, does, it can do the same thing with 
that way of uh, skipping the code. Uh, that part, uh, which way to write is up to you. Um, yeah. Uh, although I, I kind of tend to write else because it's organized and then because if you do that sometimes if you don't remember you put that you don't know what's happening sometimes so but if i don't have time i just write this then so that's uh how it works so now this supposed to uh check collision and then stop if it's it has collision or intersection but actually it doesn't work in that way then let me just show you what happens in the simulation there's uh, one more thing i need to do um So, okay, first of all, it stops. Uh, that's not what I expect. Okay, okay. Uh, one thing I kind of know what happened was, uh, so I think, so it, this agent went through a little bit because it's bent. So it, it, there must be like a 10 different agent or something. It stopped here and it's likely that the moment they try to branch and when they try to branch, one, one problem with the collision detection is that, when, especially when you're branching, I mean, your agent is branching, um, that branch creates two close agents. Then, well, uh, one, thing is that, one thing is that your agent might be too close to your parents, um, meaning this checking distance has to be bigger than first of all to your parent agent, because if you are checking that, that's too much, but but it didn't stop here, so that means it's bigger than the um, parent or distance between parent to child, uh, enough space between them. Then, um, but this might be too close to sibling. Um, and then maybe I need to make it to, I mean, smaller number for the distance. But also there's also another issue of like, um, if, to, if branching, angle is too shallow, it's very difficult to check the collision. So, but anyway, uh, I stop again. Um, I think we are, actually, if I make it too small, it does it misses a lot of collision. But anyway, um, still, there might be issue sure about another kind of logical thing, which, I mean, quite, Interaction and collision detection is always logically tricky. So something prevents something extra. So I think there's even issue of, for example, um, I might be getting into some of uh, known issue possibly. But anyway, um, maybe before showing the test, I should also talk about another issue. Um, uh, that might, this might not be related to that issue, but um, one issue is that, uh, oh, actually I want to, sh I just got idea of another thing to do. Um, first of all, if that branching angle is too shallow, let me bend a lot more, uh, 0.40 pi, and that might not, actually no, I kind of noticed the issue. Um, I noticed the issue, but I, yeah, I know it's quite A problem is that, let me, I want to do, do a sketch. All right, let me run right now. Right now, uh, right now, the one, one major difference thing from the tutorial is that tutorial has a point 0.1, point 0.2. My agent has point, wait, wait, point of position and direction. And then my age, well, line agent on the tutorial has specifically comparing point two, which is end point of that. And then end point of the, but this position in my agent is used as a beginning point. Um, actually, I'm running out of time for the morning session, but uh, let me quickly wrap up. Um, but anyway, okay, uh, quickly, uh, quick, quick thing, the thing I did wrong was I had, I should not compare the beginning point of the um, line, the, the branch agent, because if you have two agent and branching, uh, beginning point is same. So yeah, of course, always colliding. But what I had to check was the end point and end point, which is 
point two in the tutorial and the point not the position here to check the end point I have to copy direction meaning adding the direction plus this is, that's not this direction it's the agent direction and I had to check that the end point of current position okay that should work um but anyway, so that was one, one thing I did wrong. So that's one thing. And then, but there's another thing I'm doing wrong, which I have to explain and fix within next two minutes, something. So why it's starting, I start explaining the what's another wrong thing. Okay, you see there, I mean, first of all, I change angle bigger, uh, but you see there are not uh, stopping. Then the reason is that first of all, First of all, if you check the, if you have some other agent coming, if you check very short distance, you are checking only the end point of that. You are not checking the line to line, which is actually a bit, you can do that, but more difficult to do. Uh, so, if you're just, check, just checking the end point to end point, this doesn't mean in, in our logic currently, uh, easier quick logic, it, it doesn't detect the direction, uh, the intersection. So it kind of, uh, if I don't go into the more detailed tricky one to check the actual interaction, you, this size needs to be kind of nice balance, not to correlate to the parent agent, but to be enough to contain the other agent's end point. So that's one issue, but there's another issue. Um, even if I do decide it doesn't work because this agent contains currently a live or a, a agent who, who is still running. But when you delete the agent, I mean, this deletion is fine because it, this wants to stop. But problem is, problem is here. So far, my agent is deleting itself every single time. But if it's deleted, it doesn't stay in the simulation space, meaning it doesn't exist to be compared. So this needs to stay without creating child agent. I don't want this agent to keep creating every single time frame, but I don't want that to die. So I just want them to stay quiet there. To do that, what we can do is you can put this part or whole thing inside time equal zero. So just check, uh, limit everything by time. So this means, so we saw IG dot time, that was a simulation time frame, but this is different, this is just time. This simply time method means a local time for agent, meaning if agent was created, that was the starting now time. If the agent was created in like a hundred time frame, Hundred time frame is a zero time frame for the agent. So this is a local time. So this means if I put everything inside, if uh, time equals zero, that means this part is executed only once in the beginning. And then never again. So then I don't want to delete. So in this case, this child creation is done just once. And then after that, not done, uh, not uh, executed. And I kind of say the same thing here. I want to check the interaction or intersection check only first time because if the first time is kind of enough uh, in our logic, in simple logic, in more complicated logic, you can do that. Uh, you can check later as well. But anyway, so same point one be fine. So now this interact is just checking once, and then the agent doesn't die, or then they just stay quiet after creating child agent if they are not colliding. So that should be the logic to do. And so still not uh, doing. Um, this point, I feel like, is there anybody who actually stopped? Um, let me check the length of agent. Currently agent is like sine and cosine five. So just to be simple, let me just put one zero zero. 
And because of this logic or this logic, I want to have something, some radius close to checking radius or distance checking close to the length of agent. I said one. So something close to one, if it's one equal to, to parent, so I don't want that. But if it's nine, nine, it might be fine. If it's getting smaller, that become problem, but seems to be very problem. Um, Point nine. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, once it is runs, I'm gonna finish the morning session and then we uh, um, finish the uh, explanation of the um, interact method. Okay, it stopped, but I think that's because it's getting smaller and smaller. Um, let me do not scale it down. So, uh, so actually, yeah, I can. Uh, so this kind of become problem, meaning the scaling down agent is a bit more difficult to do the collision detection with that simple distance um, comparison. Although you can do the uh, using the current direction length, but anyway, this is just an example. It's called coming. It might be already somewhere. Oh, it's already there. So kind of done. Uh, so you can see some of them stopping. Like you can see that they stop here. Like, actually, these lines kind of came together at the same time. It both stops. Um, but anyway, so that's how uh, you write collision detection in the simplest way. Uh, there's more advanced way in the tutorial way. So but anyway, so this, so this, this was a um, um, just demonstration about collision detection and also demonstration about interaction as well. So uh, as I mentioned, we don't need it, or you don't need to write this part uh, in this works uh, shop session, but in case you want to uh, do in the future, yeah, that was a uh, thing to uh, know. And then also I I'm gonna show more uh, example of uh, interaction and then also the things you can do or you can generate with interaction in the tutorial especially. So it's um, becoming more geometric issue, but I wanna talk about this in the afternoon. So now I uh, conclude the morning session of the tutorial today and then I gonna see you in uh, in one or actually not this one or uh, 53 minutes and then um, but before that, let me check something. If there's any comment, uh, that that's from before. I want to talk about the before. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I gonna I gonna uh, save this code and then wrap uh, uh, send up later. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you can also ask a question later. But anyway. So, okay, let's take a break for one, not, not exactly one hour, but I, I'm gonna meet you at 2 p.m. in my time and then whatever time in your time zone. So, see you then. All right, thank you. Uh, see you later.